So yesterday we saw an amazing presentation from Amy about body language and power position. What about our voices? Do our voices reveal information even if we don't know what we are uh, understand what is being said without the words? And uh, we already know that we express our emotion using our voice, others can identify our gender, and uh, more specifically, who we are. Are there other subtle signals that our voices reveal? And today I will, I'll talk to you about our, um, as a matter of fact, they do, and uh, we'll present some of our work that we've been doing to understand voice patterns using and building computer tools that can allow us to do so. You already know about um, sensors in modern day kind of smartphones, sensors like GPS that allow us to build location aware um, applications that know where we are and how we are, the places that we visit to provide information about um, context aware information, location aware information, cater our searches based on where we are. We know that accelerometers on phone, accelerometers on, on, on mobile phones allow us to understand where, um, how people are moving in their environment, not just to kind of manipulate our UI, but also um, whether we are stationary, whether we are walking around, even how many steps we are taking that mimic the function of a pedometer. But one of the, okay, one of the oldest, so, <laughs> yeah. So one of the oldest um, sensors on the phone is the microphone. And <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't always work very well, right? Um, and, uh, and what can we do with that? And we have been building computer systems and mobile devices that can understand our voice patterns and um, we're going to show you what, what we are able to do with that. So one, and, and for, let me first start with some of, the, some of the kind of technology behind it. So what we have developed a, a kind of technique called what we call privacy sensitive processing of audio, where we actually are looking at patterns in voicing without ever recording what is being said or the content and trying to understand individual behavior and group behaviors from that. In this image, you see actually an interaction pattern of a group of 25 individuals, and here we see each column representing one day of data, and um, within that, each bar is representing a conversation. And the uh, uh, length of that bar is showing the duration, the width is showing um, how, how large is the group size, is it one-on-one -on -one or group interaction. So instantly you can actually see the uh, patterns of uh, communication that is going on within that group, how, how much conversation, what types of group size. But we can actually delve even further, we can delve into a specific conversation and look at how people are interacting within a given conversation, how they're going back and forth, how, within, uh, how energetic they are, their affect within that conversation, and we can do that all automatically using your mobile phone. So what, uh, here's another view of the same group of 25. Here, each individual, we can see their, their network, and the squiggles are kind of showing all the people they're interacting with in their community, and each of these lines is showing their interaction with other individuals in that community, and the length uh, is showing the duration, and the angle is showing the group size of the conversation. You, some differences pop out right away. If you look at that, this individual, you see that um, he is very well connected with their community, having different types of interactions, as opposed to this individual who has very limited, connect, uh, short interaction with only few people. What does this information tell us? So what we looked at, one aspect was looking at social influence. So what we discovered is how 
influential or prominent an individual is within their social network actually um, can be inferred from how others change their micro level voice patterns. When they are having a conversation, do, how they change the way they go back and forth, how they change the level of engagement, how they change their intonation and affect actually can tell us how central someone is within a network. So here you can see this kind of uh, network laid out really Ideally, the person that most central is in the center, and the size is showing the changes in their behavior, um, the low-level voicing pattern behavior. So I want to give you an anecdotal example. I'm a computer scientist. I'm a female faculty. You don't see many of us yet, or not enough. And one of the things, actually, after kind of doing all this research, when I talk to a lot of my female colleagues, they say that when they were starting earlier in their career, often they um, uh, notice that they were actually changing the way they interact when they were engaging with senior, often senior male colleagues. They would often give up their turn too early, um, actually be less vocally engaged. And one of the things we actually do uh, is train ourselves to not to do that. We'll talk over our female colleagues till we get our turn back. So one thing I'd love to do is can we actually train ourselves to regulate our voice patterns to be more influential. So I'd love to do that research with Amy. Uh, but beyond that, one of the most interesting collaborations that came out is um, looking at not just social influence, but seeing how, what can we do with voice patterns and mobile sensing to look at people's health and how can we improve health and well-being through these measurements and sensing. And I've been lucky enough to kind of collaborate with uh, my colleague, uh, a family physician, um, Ethan Burke. So I'll hand it over to him to tell you more. Oh, I don't need that, though. I just need this. There we go. Thanks. So more and more, we hear about this word wellness. What, what is wellness? Um, employees have employee wellness programs, or you can go to the hospital that will tell you to live well, or the art of wellness. But what does that word actually mean? Um, it encompasses physical health and mental health. It's a balance of the body and the mind. It's quality of life. And can we measure wellness using a mobile phone? People have been able to use uh, accelerometers and, and mobile phones to measure physical activity, which is one piece of wellness. But can we use mobile sensing and voice sensing, like Tanzim was just talking about, to measure the mind? Mental health is a significant issue uh, in wellness, half of it, if you believe what I just said. Um, right now, we detect changes in mental health, changes in depression specifically, by asking people, people self-reporting, family, friends, coworkers, telling us what they observe, possibly a mental health provider or a physician uh, that uh, administers a survey. Is that the right way to assess mental health uh, in a population, or are we missing a significant number of people? And there are a lot of people with mental health issues. 10% of the US adults have clinical depression severe enough to warrant some form of treatment. That's 50 out of 500 of us here in this room today. How can we reach all of those people uh, to do a better job of caring for their mental, well, uh, mental well-being as part of their overall well-being? We did a study in New Hampshire of older adults where we had them wear a phone that was uh, uh, using the voice sensing uh, technologies that we were speaking about. And we administered surveys uh, that are the gold standard in, in medicine right now to understand mental uh, well-being. Uh, we looked at sociability. We looked at depression. We looked at overall well-being. And what we found is that just simple voice sensing using our technologies were highly correlated with what is the gold standard of care. In some cases, nearly perfect correlation with measures of sociability. This is a great opportunity uh, for understanding small changes in mental health earlier in time that might not be detected uh, uh, by providers like me or by family members. But it also presents us with a challenge. How can we get the people to act on this in a positive way to positively affect their health? Can we give them this information in a usable form that they can make changes themselves and be proactive and, and feel activated about this, these data? So we've developed a mobile platform that we call BeWell. 
BeWell uses a standard mobile phone. It measures physical activity and mental health in the context of where you live and gives in a graphical display information to the user about how they're doing on particular domains over time. Are they seeing changes in their mental health over time? Are they seeing changes in activity over time? And with that information, we have a, they have an opportunity to act. They have an opportunity to get help. Uh, they have an opportunity to share it with others to grow and improve that overall sense of wellness or well-being that I was talking about in the beginning. So this is great, but it also presents a challenge to us. 50% of people with clinical depression don't get treatment. Of the half that do get treatment, many of them have suboptimal treatment. So more than half of people with depression uh, don't get treatment at all or don't get very good treatment. Is there a way we can use what we've learned with the mobile phone to get people help they need beyond the phone, getting to a person, getting to family members, how to connect them. So 100% of people are getting true uh, mental health treatment and an opportunity to truly be well uh, in that balance between body and mind. So you saw that we have the tool to actually measure well-being and we have a way of engaging the user or provide feedback to the user. And we'd love to hear more of your ideas of how we go beyond this 100% and actually engage people who are not um, yet engaged. How do we engage people who are not yet sick in their well-being? And we would like to find the right moment, the right time to give the right type of feedback so that people are better engaged in taking care of their own health before it becomes a problem. So I'd like to end quickly by thanking our collaborators without whom this work wouldn't be possible and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.